During the summer of 1955, Chester C. Travelstead, Dean of the USC College of Educa Education, delivered the speech, Today's Decision for Tomorrow's Schools, in Drayton Hall, where he urged educators to accept the Brown school integration decision and to begin the difficult task of desegregating public education in South Carolina. Three weeks later, Travelstead received a letter from the USC Board of Trustees dismissing him from the university. He left USC to become Dean of Education at University of New Mexico, where he later served as provost. The Museum of Education felt that some public gesture of respect should be made for Travelstead's courageous remarks and subsequent stance. And in the fall of 2006, the museum named its meeting room the Chester C. Travelstead Seminar Room. At the age of 95, Travelstead was unable to join us for the dedication. However, he sent this note, quote, had I to do it all over, I would not change what I did. At the time, I thought my remarks would be helpful to South Carolina. I believed then, as I believe now, that educators must take the lead in what is right and not be afraid to stand up for principles that they hold, end quote. Hearing such a gracious statement from a man who never returned to South Carolina again after leaving in 1956 proved most powerful that day, and the museum saw the opportunity through the career of Travelstead to recognize others in South Carolina who with great courage stand up and speak for the rights of others and further the cause of racial integration and social justice in the state. With the support of Dean Sternberg and the university, the Chester C. Travelstead Award for Courage in Education was initiated. While Chester Travelstead was unable to visit the room named in his honor, shortly after the dedication ceremony, his son, Coleman, came to the Museum of Education to see the facility. At that time, Dr. Crydell informed him of the decision described in a letter by Dean Sternberg to establish, establish the Travelstead Award. Mr. Mr. Travelstead returned to Albuquerque, and as he wrote, quote, I spent the most wonderful day with my father as I told him about the Travelstead room and award. We laughed and cried and talked about those important and difficult times in South Carolina." End quote. The next day, Mr. Travelstead wrote to Dr. Crydell informing him that his father had died the night before, ending the message with, thank you for putting him at peace. Coleman Travelstead cannot be here today, but has sent the following letter. We are sorry that previously planned travel out of the country precludes us from attending the first presentation of the Travelstead Award. Congratulations to Judge Perry for being selected as the first recipient. In reading of his career and accomplishments, I know my father would have enjoyed getting to know him. In many respects, the early parts of Judge Perry's life and my father's are similar. Both were raised by their mothers with a great deal of discipline. <laughs> Both had numerous jobs in their youth. Both served in World War II and, and both took stands toward ending segregation in the South. In the case of my father, I know that growing up in the South as a youth, he lived with certain assumptions about segregation. But as he grew, made up his mind that these assumptions were wrong. In looking back, and now better understanding what happened in Columbia in 1955, I believe that the courage displayed by my father was not so much in the original speech where he was addressing a teacher's group and probably did not expect there to be much follow-up, but more in the aftermath when he was faced with the consequences of speaking his beliefs. He was told that if he recanted his remarks, then everything could go back to where it had been prior to the speech. He refused and so is forced to leave USC. I regret that he cannot be here with us today to see where his early efforts have led. Again, congratulations to Judge Perry." End quote. We are so pleased to be able to present the first Travelstead Award for Courage in Education to an individual who has spoken out with courage for civil rights and social justice. Judge Matthew J. Perry, Jr., the leading civil rights attorney in South Carolina, during the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, who was involved in seemingly every case serving to integrate South Carolina's public schools, hospitals, restaurants, 
parks, playgrounds, and beaches. In education alone, Perry played the central role in cases that desegregated Clemson College, USC, and Charleston Public Schools. NAACP attorney Jack Greenberg, who litigated several cases in South Carolina in the 1950s and 1960s, wrote that, quote, we could have done nothing without lawyers on the front line in the South, end quote. Matthew Perry worked tirelessly on that front line, and that took courage. Randall Kennedy has described Judge Perry as, quote, a leading figure in the legal campaigns of the Second Reconstruction. Matthew Perry mastered with remarkable dexterity the delicate task of gaining and retaining the respect simultaneously of lawyers and non-lawyers, blacks and whites, sophisticates and the unlettered, local people and those who answer to national constituencies. Given Perry's prominence and success, it is remarkable that comments about him, both for and without attribution, contain so few traces of spite, anger, or jealousy. To a notable extent, he has even been able to attack segregation without irredeemably alienating segregationists. <laughs> he has handled himself in such a way as to allow even those who fought his arguments and aspirations to the nail to recognize his professional competence and personal decency." End quote. As a judge, Matthew Perry has individually tried 6,000 cases and his work led to the release of 7,000 people arrested for sit-in protests. In 1975, Judge Perry became the first black lawyer from the Deep South to be appointed to the federal bench. And in 1979, he was appointed to be the United States District Court. He was appointed to the United States District Court in South Carolina, where he now serves as senior judge. Judge Constance Baker Motley has written, quote, Judge Perry has endeavored in his professional capacities to make decisions and exercise discretion without inflicting harm, and indeed to serve as a corrective where he encountered harm that was unjust. He is a model jurist and citizen in a state which desperately needed the leadership and civil wisdom of an individual who felt deeply an obligation to the parties before him, to his community, and to <clears throat> his country. We are honored to have you with us today, Judge Perry, on behalf of the University of South Carolina's College of Education and Museum of Education, I wish to present you with a plaque <clears throat> that reads, the, United, the University of South Carolina Museum of Education Chester C. Travelstead Award for Courage in Education presented to Matthew J. Perry, Jr. in recognition of his leadership in South Carolina to further the values of integrity, intellectual spirit, justice, and stewardship and in doing, and in doing, allowing schools to become more compassionate, more generous, more humane, and more thoughtful. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived, but if faced with courage, need not be lived again by Angelou. Thank you so much, Judge Perry. Thank you.